I've been building miniature models all my life as a way of creating the realities I wanted to live in. It was a way of bringing my dreams into a physical reality. As a kid, I made home movies with miniature models. I blew up the White House 30 years before Independence Day did. I created space movies inspired by Star Wars and Battlestar Galactica. I built lots of highly detailed spaceships and miniatures and props, and then I got the local friends to play the actors. But what really got me famous was the 180 square foot miniature model of the Walt Disney World Magic Kingdom. I was 13 at the time. It was computerized, had half a mile of electrical wiring, the buildings lit up at night, and there was even food on the tables in the miniature restaurants. It got me in the New York Times, and Disney flew me down to Florida as a VIP guest. When I was 19, I started working for architectural companies, building miniature models of subdivisions, retirement communities, shopping malls, and new home designs. And then two years later, I started working for a visual effects company in Clearwater, Florida, building miniature models for TV commercials and movies. I built Washington in miniature for the 6 o'clock news in Washington because it's illegal to fly over Washington, so they had me build in miniature. There were even airplanes in the Air and Space Museum. I built the whole thing in less than two weeks. And then a news station in Memphis liked the Washington spot so much they wanted the same thing, so I built Memphis in miniature, this time in nine days. I'd crank rock music super loud and not stop until it was done. Florida was too small time for me, so I moved to Hollywood, where I got into the big stuff. I was the perfect person for the job because they always wanted it fast. I did this miniature building for Ernest Saves Christmas in one day. They gave me the job at 9 in the morning and I had to be done by 5 that afternoon. Here's a model of a house built into an iceberg for a music video. Here's a haunted mansion for another music video. Here's a miniature city for a Daihatsu car commercial. I built this whole thing in my studio apartment living room. Here's a miniature subdivision for a Courtney Love video. I had three days to build it. When this picture was taken, I hadn't slept in three days. <laughs> if you look close, you'll notice I use cocktail umbrellas for backyard umbrellas. Here's a miniature window of a building, complete with a miniature flower pot on the windowsill. And I was also doing sculptures for myself at home out of clay. But the real creative explosion came when I was able to make my own full-blown motion picture to the ends of time. It was a real two and a half million dollar movie, and although I had people helping me, I built over 300 miniatures myself for the movie. I personally hand-built over a dozen highly detailed three-foot long ships from scratch in my living room. I even made little motorized men on the deck of the ship so there was some kind of movement. This is before computers, so we had to do something physically mechanical. It was quite therapeutic making these. This wasn't work anymore. I was doing what I loved, and I was doing it for myself. I designed the castle for the movie and had a team of people build it. When it was done, it towered over 12 feet high. It was stunning to look at with all the detail. I also built a 30-foot ship. 30 feet's pretty big for a miniature. There's actual boats out there that size. This one was built to be blown up. <laughs> I love blowing stuff up. We did lots of pyrotechnics in the film because it opened with a major epic battle between flying ships attacking the castle. So I still have a bunch of ship models in my house. Here's one up here. Since these are flying ships in my movie, I thought I'd hang it up. Flying in the air looks kind of cool up there. I have another one here in the display case. This one has a whole town on it. It's got a lot of detail in it. I call this my township. Um, this one's kind of cool. These things took me about a week, roughly, to make each. I had a dozen of them, but I blew up half of them, but I still have some of them left here. Here's another one over here. I like this one. This one's kind of gold. It's a golden theme. Um, this is, uh, again, got a bunch of detail in it. I like this one. Each one's got a whole different feel and vibe to it. And then I have another one over here. But wait, there's more. This one is kind of cool. It's got stuff hanging under it. Um, and it's all just paper and balsa wood and some vacuum form plastic. And underneath it, I've got this model from Atomic City, the TV show I was putting together. Well, completely different theme. It's more of a retro 60s thing. But yeah, I got models everywhere. It was a TV show concept that was a cute, fun, retro Jetsons fantasy. I made all kinds of cute little retro miniature coffee shops, restaurants, and casino signs. I even made miniature flying cars and James Bond-like gadgets for the actors. It's fun making miniatures because they're real. They're physical. You can touch them. And that's part of what makes it that much more special. You know, part of us should never grow up. We should be having fun in life. And I hope part of what I'm doing is inspiring you. If you want to see more of my stuff, go to my website and look at my paintings, my miniatures, my special effects work, and anything else that hopefully will inspire you to have a little more fun and creativity in your life.